eventually patches gets wrecked we got a pvp death blight this fool gets death blighted hey everyone how's it going it's your boy skilled fawn and today we are going to be doing an elden ring challenge run let's waste no time and get straight into the rules starting off we can only use weapons incantations and spells that deal the death blight status effect next we are allowed to use spirit summons but they must fit the theme of the challenge run aka they must deal death blight we must beat the main game and dlc subsequently we must defeat all remembrance bosses lastly glitches and or exploits are allowed so expect some cheeky ways to take down bosses and a few things to note is we are playing on new game plus so bosses and npcs health and resistances will be slightly higher one reason why i want to do it on new game plus is because the one and only death blight weapon is locked away pretty late in the game because of this i figured it wouldn't be as interesting since i'd be using a normal weapon for most of the run but i digress i'm excited to share this run with everyone make sure to like comment and subscribe to help support me and the channel now let's get straight into it because we are in new game plus we have torrent from the start and are able to traverse to stormvale castle with ease we take on margaret the fell omen using the one weapon that deals death blight which is the eclipse shodel the weapon's ash of war will apply it to the weapon for a duration allowing the user to slowly build up the status effect even on new game plus we shred through his health and eventually take him down Next, we take on Godric. This is the first shard bearer and remembrance boss that we have come across, so let's take him down. We attack ferociously, making sure to dodge his attacks and deal damage when possible. One thing I should mention for those unfamiliar with the game is that the death blight status effect is very similar to madness that it only works on humans slash npcs madness was very niche itself but death blight is even more so unfortunately in the base game there is one weapon one incantation and one sorcery that deals death blight we eventually take down godric and claim our first great rune because of the aforementioned things with Deathblight being even more niche than Madness, I want to change how I present this challenge run. This is because if I didn't, it would basically be a quote unquote normal run, since 95 plus percent of enemies can't be Deathblighted. Though there are a few things that I want to talk about. Madness and Deathblight work on NPCs, as I mentioned earlier. What you might not know, though, is that NPCs have insanely high Deathblight resistances. I will showcase a few examples later on. But some instances take over a few minutes to get death blighted, while others I couldn't get at all. This is all useful information though. The purpose of this challenge was to also experiment and to see how well death blight really is. Similar to the Madness run, though Madness I was a lot more impressed with early on. We take Radon down, which gains us access to fight Fia's champions. With them defeated, we get Fia's mist, which inflicts death blight. Instead of me showcasing each remembrance boss, I will go through the more notable ones and talk about them in the video. If you are interested to see other remembrance boss fights alongside my full streams, check out my second channel which I will link below. We take on Morgoth and Moog Lord of Blood and have a relatively easy time. The toughest part was the Moog fight, making sure to not have the bleed status effect build up so he gets that damage boost, cause yeah that can be tough at times. These are some really fun fights. Morgoth's fast and agile attack keep us on our toes alongside Moog's blood attacks. Eventually though we take them both down and are one step closer to our ultimate goal. Another noteworthy fight was Melania Blade of Mikula. Her deadly attacks in combination with that regenerative ability are tough as heck for new or veteran players. Making sure to play things cautiously we try to break her stance again, again, and again. Eventually though we take her down her great rune will be really useful later down the line, and I will touch upon this later. Next, since we recently acquired Fia's Mist and haven't deathblighted any enemies yet, I was hungry to get a proc. We head back into Limgrave and take on Patches. Now the good and bad thing about Fia's Mist is that it doesn't deal damage and just builds up deathblight. The other ways to deal Deathblight inflict some form of damage alongside it, whether it's the physical damage of the Eclipse Shodel or the lightning from the Death Lightning incantation. Because of the aforementioned details, Fia's Mist works great since I don't have to damage the enemies and can just build up Deathblight slowly. Eventually, Patches gets wrecked. That was both awesome, but at the same time took an insane amount of time. 
Another remembrance that was noteworthy is Lich Dragon Fortisax. Since this is a part of Fia's questline for the Age of Duskborn, I want to do this ending since Godwin and Fia are intertwined alongside Godwin creating Deathblight shortly after his demise. This dragon's fight can be tough, especially if you stay close since the player has to watch out for that lightning that lingers around them. Making sure we avoid the lightning alongside the Deathblight clouds, we prove to be the victor. We acquire Death Lightning from Fortisax's Remembrance and take down Malekith to turn the capital to ash. Lastly, we grab Melania's Great Rune to do something unorthodox. For God Devouring Serpent and Rykard Lord of Blasphemy, I knew I had to do something unique since we don't have the damage of the Serpent Hunter and the status effect doesn't deal damage like frost or bleed. Because of this bump in the road, I want to use Melania's Great Rune to hopefully keep me in the fight long enough to take them down. By this point, we have grabbed a second Eclipse Shuttle since we are a new game plus. Though this fight was long and grueling, sooner or later we take down Rykard and claim victory over another Remembrance boss. In the capital of Ash, we find Sir Gideon the All-Knowing. In this fight, I was really hoping to deathblight him, but after looking at some forum comments regarding him, some comments mentioned him not being deathblightable. So yeah, that was rather unfortunate. <laughs> Afterwards, we enter Radagon and Elden Beast fight, aka the final two bosses of the main game. Up to this point, we had defeated the rest of the main game remembrance bosses, such as Estelle, Classy, Regal Ancestor Spirit, and so on. Once we take down these two bosses, we mend the Elden Ring using the Rune of the Death Prince. Eventually, the Age of Dustborn starts with us as its lord. So up until this point, we have gotten maybe one to two Deathblight procs, which to say is pretty crap. Even Madness is 10 times more useful than this, but maybe the DLC will show us otherwise. I just personally think the Madness is way better because a lot of the attacks actually deal insane poise damage too, so it's pretty good. I wanted to do some more testing and also to see if this is something in the future you guys would be interested in. I went into some PvP matches to see if maybe this is where Deathblight would shine. Now, I know there are a few methods to buff the Ash of War onto other weapons using this glitch, but if it's during PvP or online play, I prefer not to use it to get banned. After a ton of matches, we had very little luck. We met some really funny people along the way and had some great matchups. Eventually, though, we got a PvP Death Blight. That was insane. It was super fun to eventually get one, but it took like 10 plus matches, dear gosh. Though it was nice to sharpen my PvP skills and test the Deathblight status effect, it was just a lot. After doing some PvP, we got back on track and entered the DLC. A notable fight early on is Relana. I've been really enjoying parrying her attacks and getting her post in. It's actually really tough to parry her in my opinion. Consort Radon and her are insanely fun in this regard. Another fight would be Midra, since he is one of my favorite bosses in Elden Ring, and I'd say for all of the Soulsborne games. The music, moveset, and lore of this boss alone carries a lot of the DLC for me. Though Abyssal Woods as a whole was a letdown, it made up for it with an insanely fun fight at the end. Eventually, we fought and took down Bale, but to get there, the player has to take down Ancient Dragon Man. I was looking for an opportunity to use the Mimic with him only using Fiasmus. Eventually though, this fool gets death blighted. It's so satisfying to get a death blight, but man, does it require a lot of effort to pull off. Before the final boss of the DLC, the player must take down Leda and her allies. I was originally not sure if these enemies could be death blighted, so I looked on some forums. Similar to Sir Gideon, I was reading that they were also immune. Even so, I gave a few tries to death blight them, and yeah, it seemed like they were unfortunately immune. We get to Radon Consort Amicla, the final boss of the DLC. Up to this point, we have defeated all the other Remembrance bosses in the DLC and main game, so this version of Radon is last. As I mentioned earlier, I really like to parry Radon to take him down. I find it a lot more fun than a shield spear build, but that is just my opinion. And make sure to equip the Dagger Talisman to get extra damage each time he gets staggered. I did have to sacrifice that Talisman for the stamina one that I usually use, so hopefully things will work out. In Phase 2, Mikolo will join the fight and infuse his attack with Radon's. The toughest part of doing a parry build for this fight is missing then getting deleted by the combo of his attacks. 
making sure we play things carefully, avoiding the clone mirage attacks, the various area of effect attacks, and lastly the giant meteor attack, we eventually take down Radon, Promise Consort. With Radon down, this has been Elden Ring with Deathblight only. We defeated all the Remembrance bosses in the main game and DLC, alongside testing out to see how effective Deathblight was. Overall, is Deathblight worth it? No, I would say definitely not. Out of the more so PvP status effects like Madness, Deathblight, and Sleep, Madness is the way to go 100%. Obviously, Bleed and Frost are superior, but Madness for NPCs and PvP fights is also not a bad choice. Deathblight is just really awful in my opinion. Over the course of the run, we maybe had 3-4 to four Deathblight procs, which pales in comparison to the procs of Madness in the previous challenge run. Thank you for coming and watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. This greatly helps you support me and the channel. I hope you learned something new along the way and found this enjoyable. Try to do something kind for someone today. And this is your boy Skilled Fawn, and I'm out.